the second part of the basic assembly line model, we're going to work in AnyLogic itself. When you open the application, and here I'm using the Personal Learning Edition version 7.3.1, you are greeted by this welcome screen. We're going to jump right in, close the screen, and immediately create a new model, which I'm going to call Basic Assembly. The default library is the process modeling library, and we're going to mainly use this particular library. There's a variety of blocks that you can simply drag and drop onto your, onto your model space. Uh, and I urge you to use your F1 function. Go to library reference guide, in our case, process modeling library, and when you expand process modeling library blocks, you will get a detailed description of what each one of these blocks actually do. We're going to start with the source that will generate agents for us. And this is also then usually a starting point for a process model. Back to any logic. Let's drag the source to our workspace. And I'm going to call this parts arriving. We want the arrivals to be defined by the inter-arrival time. It's going to be an exponential distribution, or more specifically, I know the mean is 9.34. And this will be in terms of seconds. Next, we want to start measuring the time. In the previous part, we showed that we want to calculate the total time in the system. And there is a specific block that we're interested in called time measure start, which we can just drag to our workspace. I'm going to call that block start time and just move the label to a more appropriate place. And now we're going to add the manual preparation. And for this, we're going to use the services block. Just drag it to my workspace and call it preparation. I want to use a specific resource pool. So that is what I'm going to create next. And I'm calling this resource pool manual workers. Their capacity is initially set to 20 units. And we're going to keep it very basic. No animation at this point in time. After preparation, we want to batch them in groups of... 12 in our jig, a 3x4 jig. There's a batch block that we can use. The batch size is 12. It is not a permanent batch, so we won't tick that box. And it will then create a new entity, a single entity, that actually goes out of this block. Next is the machining of the batch. Again, I'm going to use a service block. calling this block machining. I forgot to actually set our preparation, manual preparation. The resource sets used will be manual workers and it will use one at a time. I'm going to use the maximum queue capacity for the manual preparation. And we also need to set the delay time, which in our case is uniform. I use my control space function for code completion. And it is anything between two and four minutes. Back to the machining. 
the machining time will be normally distributed. Here we just need to check that in any logic, the two parameters for the normal function is the standard deviation sigma first and then the mean. So our standard deviation for the machining is 20 seconds. Our units of measure here are minutes, so we're going to say 20 divided by 60, and our mean will be 5 minutes. After the machining, there is an unbatching that will occur, after which point there is inspection. And here I'm going to use the service block and call that inspection. Here we're not going to use a specific resource set. Uh, we just specify, well, we can make the maximum queue length again. Change the delay time to normally distributed with a sigma standard deviation of 2 and a mean of 30 seconds. And next, after the inspection, a certain proportion of our units are going to be directed towards um, the, the packaging area, while 35% should actually uh, be reworked. And for that, we're going to use the select outlook, uh, output block. And I'm just going to call that quality. And the probability will be defined, the probability for true is going to be 0 0.65, which means it will go out the true port, after which it will move towards the packaging services area. Again, packaging, we're not going to... Um, assign a specific resource set to it, use the maximum queue, si um, queue size and change the delay time to normally distributed, a standard deviation of 2 and a mean of 10 seconds. Afterwards we can get rid of the units and I'm just going to call that ship. But before I forget, before we actually ship the units we want to stop measuring our time so we're going to use time measure end and I'm going to call that stop time. And each of the time measure end blocks, we have to link to an appropriate time measure start block. In this case, it'll be our start time element. And we'll work with this block a little bit uh, more uh, later on. Right. So that will be 65% of the parts. The other 35%, has to undergo manual uh, reworking and for that I'm using the services the services block and to connect it I'm going to add again the maximum queue length and this is a uniform distribution between here we can do it the other way around uniformly distributed between 30 seconds and 2 minutes which is 2 times 60 again the unit of measures being seconds We can just move this up a little bit to make more space. Uh, 
After the reworking occurred, we're going to use another select block because we said 90% of them, let's call that rework check. The probability to go out the true port is 90% now, at which point it will go to packaging. And 10% of the times it will actually be scrapped. And for the scrapping, we will just use a sync. And we will connect it to the false port. So 10% of our units will go out false. And 90%, according to this probability, will go towards packaging. All right, we can save our model. And in principle, when we run this little assembly line of ours, we should have a running model, which we can actually speed up. We can see units are being prepared. As soon as 12 are finished, the batch goes through. And then 12 units are being unbatched again. And the nice thing about simulation is we can speed this up really fast. But say we want to measure this model of ours over a specific period. So we're going to go to our simulation, going to our model time, and we actually want to um, stop at a specified date. So let's take today is the 4th of May. I'm going to use that date. And let's say we want to start from 7.30 in the morning until the same day, 4.30 in the afternoon. Speed it up very quickly or take out all of the animation and just let it run at maximum speed. Then at 4.30 in the afternoon on the same date, we can actually see that our manual workers had a utilization of 95%, which is quite ridiculously high. We had 3,276 units that were shipped and 121 units that were actually scrapped. So let's just change this name of our sync to scrap. In the next part, I will show how we can get a better handle on the output that is actually generated by this simulation model. Mm -hmm.